Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at different uh, shape object properties. We're going to be playing with the group tool so we can group objects together and control them all at once. We'll be looking at ways, different ways to select uh, objects that might be over top of another, and then we'll be looking at some with the uh, different levels that the objects appear on. So if I hit the plus key, I'll just zoom in a little bit here. I'll select the square tool, left click and drag to create a nice square. If you remember from our last tutorial, Inkscape remembers what we did last time. So it has this border, a certain color, this stroke, and then it has this fill, another color. So if I want to change this, I can right click, go to fill and stroke, and I can change my stroke back to something more like default that comes when you first turn Inkscape on. We'll do one millimeter for our stroke, and then we'll do our stroke color, black, and our fill color, we'll keep it yellow. Our alpha's up almost all the way. Look, it's 252. 255 is the highest, so we'll put it back to 255. Our opacity is all the way up. So now we have a pure solid yellow uh, rectangle square and with a black border. So now I'm going to draw some other objects. And remember, it'll keep in memory, it'll remember the colors and the stroke settings that I'm using. Uh, so we'll draw a couple things here. This is probably good for now. Uh, yeah, we'll just make a little, we'll make Pac Man because he's fun. And then we'll change the color of some of these. I'll just do this with using the bottom bar. We'll change a few of these colors. Now, so I've drawn these four different objects. And the first one we drew was the rectangle or square. And so this one is going to be the lowermost level. So if we drag it behind any, if we just move it around, it's behind all of these other objects. The second thing we drew was this. So it's going to be behind these, but it's going to be on top of this one. So what I'm showing is the order that you draw things in is the order they appear in the level on top of each other. That's different than layers. Inkscape does have layers and we'll be playing with those later, but right now everything is drawn in the same layer. There's just different levels uh, that they are on top of each other in the order that you drew them in. So if we want to change the layer, if we want to change the star to be a different uh, on a different level, I mean, we can click here. We've done this in earlier videos, but we click uh, this button up here raises and lowers to different levels. If we want to raise it all the way to the top, we just click raise to top, all the way to the bottom, lower to bottom, and then it'll be even below the very first object we drew. Uh, another way we can do that is by using the page up and page down key on the keyboard. So I use that quite a bit because sometimes you'll draw something or for example, uh, and a good key to learn is, to, is a duplicate. Um, so if you hit control D, It'll duplicate the object. So now we have two squares, one on top of another. But when you duplicate an object, it appears on the very topmost layer. And so sometimes you'll duplicate, like for example, if you're doing a, a background, we want a nice gray background and we set this to the very bottom. But then if I want to duplicate this background, I can select it, hit Control D on my keyboard, then it covers up everything. So now I have two backgrounds, but one is the very top layer, one's the very bottom layer. So I, if I move this out of the way, we can see how that works. So I hit the delete key. That's a super important key to learn. Make sure you memorize that one, control D to duplicate. I think you can do it also, uh, I'm sure there's a way you can do it some other way. But control D is what I do to duplicate. Uh, you can also do control C. So you select an object, hit control C. Then at any point you want, you can hit control V and it will paste that object again. So you can control V, control V, and you can paste a whole bunch of different of that same object. I'll delete these by selecting them, hitting the delete key. Uh, what else? I'm gonna delete this background and delete. So you can work with, you can move multiple objects at once. Maybe I want to move this star together with this Pac-Man guy. So I select the Pac-Man and then I hold down the shift key and hit and click the star with my left click as well. And now those two will move together. And so they, they're this own selection. They'll also scale together. They'll color together. If I click like purple, they'll both turn purple. If I click white, they'll both turn white. So they'll do whatever I, whatever I apply to them will happen to them together. If I blur, they'll both blur together. So anything selected. <clears throat> if I want to add a third item in there, well, I can just hold down shift and click a third item. And now all three of these are being selected together. If I hit escape, None of them are selected. I can click on the star and move it. I can move any one of them separate. But to select them all, I can hold down the shift key and select as many things as I want. If I want to select everything, I can do it that way. 
Another way to do that is just to use your selection window. So left click and drag and anything within this selection window will become selected. And we can control, we can resize, shape, color, all that stuff independently. Uh, what else? Okay, so what if we want to group? I'll change this to a uh, green. You can group objects so that they stay, they stay tied to each other. So if I want to tie, maybe I want to do like a, let's make like a snowman. Let's take this, hit Control D to duplicate this circle, Control D again to duplicate this circle. We'll make the top one kind of small, make the middle one a little bit smaller. And yeah, so now we have like a nice little snowman here. And I always want this object to move together. I don't want to have to move every part of it every time I move. I don't want to have to select by hitting shift every time or by dragging and doing a window select. So what I do is I do select everything once and I go up to object and go down to group and click group and that'll group everything together. Now this behaves as if it's one object every time. No matter what circle I click on, it'll just select all three of them and I can resize them, shape them, recolor them and they'll all do whatever I, uh, whatever action I have them do. Uh, if I want to ungroup them, I can just go to Object while it's selected and go to Ungroup, and that'll ungroup these again, and I can control them individually. Also, while they're still grouped, so the shortcut to group is Control G. So let's select them all and go Control G. A lot of times, if you download like a SVG file, they'll be grouped items. And in fact, the first time you open it up, sometimes everything is one big group. The whole image is one group. And you can have groups within groups too. But it's sometimes, so what you can actually change, you can change something in the group without having to ungroup it. And to do that, you just double click, and then you can select a single object. You can select all these single objects within the group. And then when you hit escape and click on it again, oh, it stays as just the group. So it's still grouped together. We didn't have to ungroup to make that change. Um, learning to use groups is important. You're gonna use groups in Inkscape. Groups are super important. Uh, and this group too, it's going to be, if I lower it down, it's going to lower the entire group, which is another thing too. So nothing behaves independently. When it's all selected, they all behave um, as one object, basically. Uh, yeah, well, what else was I going to say about groups? That's probably about it. Um, okay, so if we hit the tab key on our keyboard, we can select the very bottom most um, object. So that happens to be this one because I lowered it down to the bottom. While that's selected, if I hit the tab key again, it'll cycle through every object starting from the lowermost to the uppermost object. So that's the way you can find objects. Sometimes you'll have an object like this Pac-Man. Maybe, we'll, maybe we want to create like a nice thing like this, like a box with Pac-Man on top of it. But Pac-Man might be on the bottom level. So he's behind the box. We could move the box and then, and then raise it on top, but to, to access a, an object that's below, what we can do is hold down the Alt key and then click on that object. So the first time we click, it'll select the foremost object. The second time we click, it'll select the object behind, and then we can see. Oh, and actually, if we want to drag it, if we want to move it from that point, we have to hold, keep holding the Alt key. So right now, if I hold down Alt and click, it'll select the Pac-Man, and then while still holding Alt, I left click and drag, and I can drag him out, okay? Um, that's something you should probably practice because a lot of times you will have an object that's, that'll be hidden behind something and you'll want to be able to click on it and you just, for whatever reason, you won't be able to. There'll be too much stuff in the way and you won't be able to click on it. So just hold the Alt and you can toggle through clicking any item that's behind there. So I'm just holding Alt while keeping clicking and it's selecting every object through the layer. Or like I said, if you don't have too many to go through, you can hit the Control key until you find the one you want. And then like the Pac-Man selected right now, I can tell because of the size of the selection box, then I can raise it up by clicking the level up key or by doing page up and page down. Uh, yeah. I think that's all I want to show you in this video. Play with all that because this is the, bas the basic building blocks, the basic tools you'll need to use when making anything in Inkscape is just learning how to control these objects and move them around one with another, selecting them, learning how to duplicate. So we can duplicate this one. If I get control D right now, it duplicates this group and now it's still grouped. So we can really, you can really start to get crazy. If I select all this stuff, hit control G. Now I have another group here, then control D 
and duplicate these a couple of times, then all of a sudden we've got all kinds of different objects, different groups. And yeah, if I want to if I hit shift and select a few of them, we can move these around, resize them. So play with it. Just do what I, just what I was doing just there. Play with it, get familiar with it, and then move on to the next tutorial. Appreciate you watching. Catch you in the next one.